<clears throat> All right. Well, what's up, everybody? Grim Green back here today. Thank you so much for joining me again. Politics. I think I say this every single time, but the issue of vaping and tobacco control has become a politicized issue. There's just no way around it. It shouldn't be. It should be a purely public health issue, but... This is America. Without sounding too much like a broken record, this is something I also say every time. I'm a freedom guy. I'm a registered libertarian. And one of the core tenets, for lack of a better term, of libertarianism is that belief in the free market. I and many libertarians share that same belief that if left to do what it is supposed to do, the free market can solve a lot of society's problems. I personally think one of the best and most current examples of the free market solving a societal problem is vaping. You see, pre-vaping, you only had a few options if you wanted to stop smoking. We allow smoking in America to adults 21 and over despite the mountain of known health risks from using them because freedom in America and tax money. Option one, cold turkey. I've done it in the past. It's awful, but possible and not enjoyable uh, in any way. NRTs made by big pharmaceutical companies. So things like, you know, the gum, the lozenge, the patch, all sorts of sprays. Never tried them, never really cared because smoking for me was much, much more than just the nicotine. And the success rate for quitting with an NRT well, the Harvard School of Medicine studied long-term quit rates and found that NRTs, nicotine replacement therapies, were no more effective than quitting cold turkey. This is that study, and I'll have a link in the description. It's about a 5% success rate. And then there's always option three, Chantix, which just don't. I can't believe that that drug is allowed to be on the market. These were, and honestly kind of still are, the governments and body part orgs and health orgs suggested methods for quitting smoking. Then, as early as 2007, a brand new product appeared on the market. The e-cigarette. Small, cruddy, little cigarette-looking battery atomizer combos. Overpriced products mostly seen on late-night TV commercials, smoking everywhere. Can't smoke what you want anymore? The all-exclusive smoking everywhere electronic cigarette. Felt more like a novelty, really, than anything else. But a handful of smokers, myself included, used these cruddy, overpriced e-cigarettes to actually quit smoking after 18 years of smoking cigarettes. The early years of vaping were 100% consumer driven. We were buying them from China and modifying them to suit our own needs, building better atomizers, modifying flashlights into battery holders with buttons to power them, drilling holes into atomizers and stuffing them into tanks made of pill bottles and hot glue. Yeah. That was a thing. The market had a need and no one there to fill the gap, so the consumers of the product took it upon themselves to innovate this technology forward. Without those early years of tinkering by a small group of passionate ex-smokers, we would not have the very sleek and efficient devices that we have today. Innovation powered by cheap manufacturing just led to a boom in the vape industry. The tech became better and better and mass produced and literally millions and millions of now ex-smokers were being converted literally on a daily basis to less harmful vapor products. Gigantic vape expositions were being held all over the world and smoking rates continued to drop wherever vaping went. Vape shops popped up across the country, started by the very consumers that vaping had helped, now pumping millions of dollars into their local economies. Unsatisfied with the low success rate products constantly being pushed by the government and big pharmaceuticals, the consumer created a solution to the societal problem of smoking and the free market, unencumbered by burdensome regulations, allowed it to flourish and literally improve the lives of millions and millions of Americans, both physically and monetarily. It's like a libertarian's wet dream. Now, this was all pre-2017, so pre-Jewel. The vape community is pretty torn on the detriment or benefit that salt nicotine has had on the industry. But viewing it through a purely libertarian lens, I have no problems with it 
even in flavors. Many truly long-term smokers need that 50 milligram salt nick in order to feel satisfied by vaping. That's just undeniable. Not everybody does, but some people do. Even with some slight youth uptake, the net benefit of vaping to public health still outweighs the literal minuscule number of non-smoking youths that have experimented with vaping. Unfortunately, that's just a really hard sell in today's political and regulatory climate. We have Tobacco 21 nationwide now. It's already illegal for anyone under 21 to purchase a vapor product, flavored or not. And if 21 and over sales with an ID is good enough for alcohol, which definitely comes in flavors and definitely comes in 180 and 190 proof variations and definitely kills roughly 5,000 youths under 21 every year. And no matter how much we enjoy it is definitely not a net benefit to public health. Then 21 and over sales with an ID is good enough for vaping. Period. Vaping is the consumer-driven solution to the smoking problem. It allows smokers to quit deadly combustible tobacco cigarettes and before the government got involved and ruined everything, was helping millions of Americans live healthier lives. Vaping succeeded where the powers that be failed, where the truth initiative failed, where big pharmaceuticals failed. And now, thanks to the government's years-long fear-mongering campaign against vaping, hundreds of vape shops are closing every month or are resorting to selling legal but deadly combustible tobacco just to stay afloat. Tax revenue lost, state revenue lost, and previously former smokers who don't have access to their vapor products anymore are being forced back to widely available combustible tobacco cigarettes. Distribution centers are closing down and the supply chain of a once profitable and thriving legal US industry is slowly being dismantled, not to mention the thousands and thousands in job loss involved. Thanks in no small part to governors like Gretchen Whitmer and Charlie Baker and Jay Inslee for banning nicotine vaping and shutting vape shops down in their state during the Evali debacle, which as we learned later on from the CDC was 100% related to vitamin E acetate contaminated street bought THC cartridges and had absolutely nothing to do with legal nicotine vaping. The free market provided and the government taketh away. But all is not lost yet. Apart from the virus itself, the big concern on everyone's lips these days is the economy. So how about this? COVID-19 is a respiratory virus. All smokers are more susceptible to this. And all smokers can benefit greatly and immediately from switching over to less harmful vapor products. And despite the aforementioned bans, there is still a network of 10,000-ish shops already in place Place set up, ready to meet consumer demand. We encourage every smoker to switch. We exempt vape shops from being shut down. We allow online sales, delivery, curbside pickup. We will help thousands of Americans keep working, keeping money flowing in the economy, and help those more susceptible to the virus stay healthy. Two birds, one stone. I'll have some links down in the description regarding today's video. Do you think vape shops should be exempt from shutdown during the quarantine? There are states already with online sales bans during a quarantine. I think those should be reversed immediately. Anyway, I'd love to get your thoughts down in the comments below. And remember, no matter what any crooked politician tells you, absolutely, you guys, let's keep on vaping.